So a two-head setup is the perfect place to start for anybody getting going with flash photography. Um, in this part of the film, I'm going to be showing you three fundamental lighting setups, high key, mid key, and low key. If you grasp this, okay, I promise you, you can do anything with your studio flash because it all revolves around about what each light is doing in the equation to that setup itself and will pretty much allow you to shoot anything forever. The easiest place to start is going to be in low key. What does low key mean? Basically, lower tones of grey, so black or very dark. And what we're going to be using for the low-key setup, as a rule, is going to be the key light positioned to illuminate your subject. So think about the clock face, and at this point you're looking down, and your key light is going to be between either the 3 to the 6 o'clock position, or the 6 to the 9 o'clock position. In that kind of moulding, you're going to get a good three-dimensional subject. As far as how you separate them away from the background is concerned. With low key, we tend to use separation light for the hair or for the body or a bit of both. So by doing that, it allows the subject not to kind of merge onto the background. Traditionally, all light comes from one side. However, there are times where we put the um, separation light on the opposite side to the key light. So once again, if we look at the clock, we've got a key light, say at five o'clock, and then we'd have a separation light at between the 10 and the 11 o'clock. For me, the mid-key portrait is again very simple to set up, and in fact, it's one that I rely on all the time for the likes of my black and white portraits. Uh, why? Well, I can refer to it as just one light if I want. Uh, the key light is uh, obviously allowed to illuminate the subject, and some of the light will naturally spill around the room. So if I was using a, a white wall that was not being lit in any way, because of the fall off of the light, it gives me a natural gray background, hence this mid-key element. Um, but there's ways to separate the subject away from the background, of course, using either a kind of the accent light onto the hair or onto the body. But let's not forget, uh, the mid-key is just not about black and white photography. In the same way, it could be used as a background light to light the scene behind. Just don't draw the eye past the subject, um, otherwise it starts to actually be a distraction instead of an attraction. So again, the mid-key can be a very, very powerful setup, especially when you're opting for this simple one or two light setup. High key can be one of the most complicated setups in the scenario, but don't be frightened of it. Just follow what I'm going to be saying in this very, very short clip. High key means that the background specifically is going to be illuminated into the very highest point of grey, i.e. white. All you need to do for this setup, I promise you, is first of all, meter your key light to your working aperture, let's say it's f8, and then what we need to do is light the background. E easy if you're shooting just one subject or two subjects to position it right behind them to illuminate across the whole background, allowing it to spread. And all you need to do is meter towards the light source to make sure that that light is giving you two stops more of exposure than the key light was. So in other words, if the key light is f8, when we meter for the background with just the background light flashing off, it would be f16. And that will give you a simple and perfect high key scenario portrait every single time. Now, in the perfect world, I want you to buy a third light because then we can do much bigger groups. In other words, we can have one light off to the left, another light off to the right, each of them lighting a part of the big white wall. And then if you meet them independently to gain that F16, you'll get a perfect high key setup every single time. So as you can see, flash photography is not a black art. It's basically a photographic science. As long as you understand that, you should always try and do your portrait with a minimal amount of kit without complicating it, especially in the beginning. You're going to find that your portraits are going to absolutely pop off a page and look amazing on the back of the camera, never mind in print. So as far as a photographer's concerned, Elinchrom allows me to get as creative as I want or as basic as I want. And that's one of the reasons I always choose Elinchrom.